guys. This is Tracy Chikowski. I can't get my head down there. I'm doing the best I could do with this videoing. Anyway, I was inspired by the women's uh, department from Florida with their uh, women's retreat that they put online last weekend, and it was entitled Out of the Blue. It was great. Um, I put some links to it in my Facebook, so if you go to my Facebook, you'll see links to the Florida Division's Women's Retreat Online. It was really great. Um, kudos to those ladies for jumping to it and doing a whole event online as opposed to meeting at camp, which is what they were originally going to do. So, I am not a videographer, but I'm going to try to do this because I think it's going to be fun. So, I'm going to do a 20 by 20. I have a 20 by 20 canvas. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six shades of blue, and then a gold that I want to use in the middle in between them. I want to do um, one technique called the ring pour. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this paint. Now, all of these acrylic paints are different paints. Most of these are Arteza paint. And uh, one is Deco Art Americana Metallic Gold. And uh, one is Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt. And then my white is Artist Loft Flow Acrylic mixed with a little bit of Pure White Satin Enamel and Floetrol. Um, if you're interested, because it takes a long time doing the uh, mixing up of the paint, so I didn't put that on here because we don't have time for that. But anyway, if you're interested in a video that shows how to mix the paint, we'll do that. But I'll just tell you right now, is that right side up? Floetrol is, uh, or is this right side up? I can't tell on that thing. Anyway, Floetrol is what I mix in with uh, the paint and also um, a little bit of bottled water. Anyway, I know that um, in order to cover my canvas, I'm gonna have to have approximately 15 ounces of paint. And you get that uh, calculation by doing the square inches, which is 20 by 20, and dividing that by 28, and it comes up to 14 point something. So I'm gonna do a little bit over 15 because I like to give myself a little wiggle room. So I thought I would start us going from, we're gonna do the ring pour and I'm gonna use a measuring cup. And I want, I hope I can make this where you can see it. Okay, so see my measuring cup? Um, this paint color right here is called Payne's Gray. It's by Artist Loft and it's really, the camera doesn't do it justice on the lovely color that it, it's a lovely color. It really is. Um, it's very beautiful. This next color, well, blues are my favorite color, so I'm sort of partial. This blue is ultramarine blue. It's also an Arteza paint. Put a little bit there. This one is pearlized electric blue by Arteza. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of the gold, no, wait a minute, yes. I'm gonna put a little bit of the gold right here. And then some more white. Put my white way over here. Let me set that down for a second. And you'll notice I'm gonna do a ring pour. So how I'm, the way I'm layering this paint is that I'm layering it down the side. I'm not just plopping it right down the middle. I'm layering it, okay? So there's that, and then this one is Sky Blue Pearlized by Arteza. And this one, I'm oh, this one is the Cobalt Metallic by Artist Loft, and it's a beautiful color, I love it. I love all these colors. And now this one is a, I can't really tell you exactly, it started out its life, as uh, Liquitex Basics Aqua Bright, but I ended up adding some Deco Art Americana Electric Blue in there. So it's all different colors. Now, coming back to the Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray. 
ultramarine blue still layering down the side. Pearlized electric blue. I'm gonna call this old gold because it's not the 24 karat gold that I thought it was. So old gold, a little bit more white. Pearlized sky blue. Metallic cobalt blue. I'm just gonna call this aqua, but it's, you know what it is, it's my mixture <laughs> of different colors and different brands, so there you go. Let's see, I think I'll keep going with my color scheme here. Payne's gray, ultramarine blue. Now I'll put the Payne's gray in there because it does, I know you can't see it from the camera, but it does have a sheen of blue to it, which is really pretty. Okay, I'm trying to keep with it like we had it. Okay. Don't wanna pour it and wish, oh, I wish I would've done this, this, and this. But you always do. You always think, oh, I wish I would've done this, this, and this, but it's okay. It's okay, this is fun, not stressful. This is fun, not stressful. Did y'all hear me? <laughs> okay. Because there's no point. If you're going to just get stressed, don't do it. Just don't do that stressful. If it's stressful. This is supposed to be ah, serene, creative time. And you don't have to stress about anything going on. It's all good. It's all good in this little world right here. Okay. That, I don't know, it's a little, I still need a little bit more. Keep going a little bit. Still need a little bit more. A little bit more. And we want to have a little bit of wiggle room, too. I always give myself wiggle room on pore paintings, because you never know. I'm going to use the rest of that metallic cobalt. That's such a pretty color. I love that color. And then we'll end with aqua. the aqua something something because I'm not sure. Now I'm going to move. I've learned that I'm going to move all these cups out of my way or else I'm going to get all kinds of splatters in them. I meant to tell you, be sure to wear something that you don't care if it gets paint on because I don't care how careful you are, you're going to get paint on you. No matter how careful you are, I'm serious. It never fails. Okay. Now, I got a little bit of paint, and that's okay. I'm just gonna, it's all right, and you'll see. Well, now I have my great um, kitchen torch. I'll first want to torch this white a little bit just to get the air bubbles out of the paint, okay? You don't wanna hold your torch too close to the paint because you don't want your paint to burn. Just ask me how I know that. <laughs> You don't want your paint to burn, because that will mess up your painting. Okay, so here we go, ladies. Here we go. I'm going to do, this one is going to be a ring pour. That's what the technique is. Acrylic pour painting, ring pour painting. I poured a white in the middle, and now I'm just pouring ring, doing a ring pour on top of the white. And we'll see how it turns out. It's just as an experiment, you know. I was inspired to try blue painting, different blue colors, and putting the gold, just the gold in there as a contrasting color to all the blue. So, and this cup, this is a two cup measuring cup, and I filled it up. So it has 16 ounces in it, so we got a couple ounces to play with that we can move around, and you never know. You pour until you're happy, okay? You pour your paint until you're happy. Just pour it until you're happy. Such, I love blue. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Ring pour, all different colors blue layered in the cup. Okay, I 
think we're getting to the end of the paint and I don't want to mess it up when I bring it up out of the okay Whew, okay I'm gonna move that over to, I'm gonna just reposition the weight of the paint better to the center of my canvas that's really where I want to start is the center I'm gonna retorch the torch it is because you see I don't know if you can see that but there are bubbles, and those are air bubbles that are in the paint. You don't want air bubbles. So we want to pop them. And we want to look at it and see. And I'm going to start moving it around, and I don't know if I'm going to get you out of, out of the camera or not. But, hmm, I think we'll start by tilting. And you don't want to tilt fast because if you tilt, well, you know what? I think I'm going to put a flow extender around it. What's a flow extender, you may ask? It is nothing more. It's nothing but this white paint. Just the white paint. That's all it is. Is See the white paint that I poured before? I'm going to pour a little bit around it so that it has something to slide on. Now, some acrylic artists like to put down a base coat to begin with, but I like to put the little puddle and then pour on top of that, and then if I need it, I do the um, flow extender, which that's fine. That's fine. I'm gonna get my spatula, my painting spatula, which is right over here. so that I can smooth this paint. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it out a little bit. Move it to the edges some. It's okay. It's good. It's okay. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to put drips on the center. Eh, I'm too, I'm messy. Sloppy, messy, sloppy, messy sometimes. Okay. Hey, but that's part of the fun. Just making a mess sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. I hope I've got you back in there. Yeah, I do. Okay, so I kind of smoothed it out a little bit. I'm gonna run my fingers around the edges since I have my gloves on. Doesn't really, it's not, it's not gonna hurt me. <laughs> I want to make sure that my edges are covered because sometimes when you're in the middle of tilting and pouring, you miss the corner, though you miss the edges. And so, also want to get the edges covered. So here we go. Mhm. Mm here we go. Hmm, you know what? I think I want to comb wreck it. I want to comb wreck it. I haven't ever done a comb wreck before. I've never done a comb wreck before. What do you think? Should I comb wreck it? I'm going to because I can't help myself. Let's see, how would I do it if I were gonna do it? I think Maybe I would start off over here. This is crazy. I've never done this before. I've never done a comb wreck. But I've seen other people do them and they just look so pretty once they get through with their comb wrecks. They just end up so pretty. Wow, that was different. <laughs> that was different. How about if I went from here and did that too? I know. When I'm, when I'm learning how to do the video, I shouldn't be learning to do a new technique, but look how cool that looks. Woohoo! All right, we'll see. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know, this is an experiment. So here we go. Maybe I'll tip tilt it this way a little bit. Now I've got, um, in pour painting, it's important to have your canvas up off of the surface because that you're painting from your table because you want it to have room for the paint to flow over the edge of the painting and oh that's kind of pretty it looks peacock doesn't that look like a peacock Woo. okay we went over the edge there now we're coming back to the middle it's important to get the weight of your paint back to the middle so that's what it is doing now Woo! this is fun okay I think I think I'm gonna go this way now a little bit.
You don't want to rush it. That's another thing. One thing that is, I find hard is I want to rush it and just want to get it over the edge and I'm going to make it come right back. I find that I end up rushing it and also I end up not knowing when to stop. <laughs> okay, I'm turning a little bit so it'll be easier for me to tilt. I hope you can see it. Tilt it this way. Need to get the middle. Also, some people will say, well, I liked how it looked right when you poured it. Why did you even tilt it at all? Well, you have to because you can't leave too much paint on your canvas or else as it's drying, it will crack. And you don't want that. Oh, this is coming out pretty. This is coming out pretty. Not too bad. For a first video and first comb wreck. I did a, it's called a comb wreck when you comb through your painting. I think I liked that. I'm trying to get it over this corner without messing up the pretty that it's doing over here. But I do want it to cover the corners. Okay, there you go. Now come back to the middle. Back to the middle. Whew, okay. Oh, it's looking pretty cool. It's looking pretty cool. I don't know. What do y'all think? I'm bringing it up close so you can see. It's hard to see it from afar on the camera because it just doesn't give it justice when you're doing that. But you just, it's cool. It's really pretty. Out of the blue, okay. This is my out of the blue inspired acrylic pour painting. So, I just want to inspire you, anyone who's listening, to don't be afraid to try something new like pour painting. You would be surprised how cathartic and fun it is. Don't be surprised. One of the things also is you want to, uh, you want to scrape the bottom. You want to scrape the edges to get all that excess paint off because if you don't, the paint will keep moving. It'll keep moving one way or another. Uh-oh, I see something in here. No, is that something or is it just a white spot? Might be just a white spot. I don't think it's a thing. You always wanna have a pair of tweezers around with you to grab lumps or whatever that might just show up all of a sudden in your painting. That happens occasionally. That's because of the flow troll. It gets clumpy and glumpy, however, I have a, I have a strainer on my flow troll, so it shouldn't be the flow troll. Not sure. I just want to stretch that out a little bit. Yeah, my problem is knowing when to stop stretching, stop pour, when to stop pouring, when to stop combing. I've never combed. This was my first comb. Y'all saw it. Okay. Uh, as soon as I get this. Oh, I really like that deep blue over there, don't y'all? Okay, so I love you, everybody. That was my acrylic pour painting video. <laughs> if you like it, then please like and subscribe to my channel, and then I'll be able to do more pour paintings if I know that you like them. And also, um, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on how to measure and, pull and mix the different paints. I'll be happy to show you that, too. It's a little, it's a little uh, chemistry going on there. So, thank you so much for watching. God bless you all.